भगवते वसुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाया We're reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 8, this text number 39. Neyam sabishyate tatra. Yate danim gadadhara Twatpade ankitabati Swalakshana vilakshitai Neyam sabishyate tatra Yate dhanim gadhadhara Twatpader ankitabhati Swalakshana vilakshitai Neyam sabishyate tatra 
Yate Danim Gadhadhara Twatpader Ankita Bhati Swalakshana Vilakshitai Na, not, yam, this land of our kingdom. So Bishyate will appear beautiful. Tatra, then, yata, as it is now. Idanim, now. Gada, Gadadara, O Krishna, Twat, your. Padai, by the feet, Ankita, marked, Bhati, is dazzling, Swalakshana, your own marks, Vilakshitai, by the impressions. Translation, O Gadarhar Krishna, our kingdom is now being marked by the impressions of your feet and therefore it appears beautiful. But when you leave, it will no longer be so. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. There are certain particular marks on the feet of the Lord which distinguish the Lord from others. The marks of a flag, thunderbolt, an instrument to drive an elephant, umbrella, lotus, disc, etc. are on the bottom of the Lord's feet. These marks are impressed upon the soft dust of the land where the Lord traverses. The land of Hastinapur was thus marked while Lord Sri Krishna was there with the Pandavas and the kingdom of the Pandavas thus flourished by such auspicious signs. Kunti Devi pointed out these distinguished features and was afraid of ill luck in the absence of the Lord. Om Jnana Timarandasya Jnana Shalakaya Chakshuram Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namah 
Shri Chaitanya Manobhistam Sapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupakatamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Bandeham Shri Guru Shri Yatapadakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamsya Shri Rupam Sakrajatam Sahagana Raghunatam Vitam Tam Sajevam Sadvaitam Savadutam Harijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakanitam Scha He Krishna Karana Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Kanchana Gorange Radhe Vrinda Vaneshwari Vrishapanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kaupata Rupyascha Kripa Sindhu Paevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namo Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namane Namaste Sarasati Deve Kauravani Prasharine Nirvisesha Shanyavadi Pasyachate Satarine Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhattavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare so this is one of the prayers offered by Queen Kunti to Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna was preparing to depart to Dwarka to go back to his family. He has a large family, not only his own family members, but also the Yadu dynasty. They're all there in Dwarka and they're all absorbed in thought of Lord Krishna. And the longing, when will Lord Krishna return? And Lord Krishna is also thinking to go back to be with his devotees. But he has devotees in Hastinapur also. The Pandavas and Queen Kunti. And the Pandavas and Queen Kunti had been through a lot of distressing situations. Even up to the moment of Lord Krishna's departure, Aswatthama threw the Brahmastra weapon at Uttara and wanted to burn the child in the womb of Uttara. Aswatthama wanted that there should be no descendants of the Yadus, of the Kuru dynasty. He wanted to kill everyone, all the, all the, uh, the young descendants who may grow up to become the head of the Kurus. He wanted to remove them, he wanted to kill them. And he killed the five sleeping sons of Draupadi. But, and then after that, then he threw the Brahmastra weapon at Uttara. But of course, Lord Krishna saved that child in the womb of Uttara. And so the Pandavas were always feeling so much indebted to Lord Krishna, who had been helping them through all of their different trials and tribulations, their home being burned and being fed poison, and then the attempt to disgrace Draupadi, to show her, her, her to, to, to test her chastity by trying to disrobe her. But in every situation, Lord Krishna was there to help them to overcome the challenges and to be successful. So Queen Kunti 
is feeling so much indebted to Lord Krishna and she's so much obliged and so much attached to him. And not only Queen Kunti but the Pandavas, all of the Pandavas. And she's describing how the Lord, how he traverses in their region and the, the marks of his lotus feet are everywhere. And it mentions how Lord Krishna's lotus feet are marked with different auspicious symbols. Actually, I think there's some 18 different symbols on the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. And these different symbols all signify, they all have special significance. Like the umbrella, umbrellas of course are used to protect us from the heat and the rain, but the umbrella is also to give shelter, shelter at the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. And then there's also a gourd, which is an instrument for controlling elephants. The elephant keeper, he's given this metal, sharp metal object, which he will pierce into the elephant to control the elephant, to maneuver the elephant. So our mind is like that. Our mind is like a stubborn elephant. And so that instrument is there on the lotus feet of Lord Krishna, that if we take shelter of Lord Krishna's lotus feet, then our stubborn minds can be controlled. So anyway, there, each of the different items on the lotus feet of Krishna have special significance. And Queen Kunti is saying that our kingdom is beautiful because of these impressions which are everywhere. But she said, if, you, if Lord Krishna, if you're going to leave, then our kingdom will be no more beautiful. Though it, our auspiciousness will be ended. So Lord, the presence of Lord Krishna makes everything auspicious. Of course, Krishna is present everywhere, in everything. He is in the hearts of every living entity. And he is in the atom, and the at atoms are everywhere. So Lord Krishna is everywhere. But of course we are not seeing Krishna. Queen Kunti and the Pandavas, they are seeing Krishna. They are topmost devotees. They see Lord Krishna everywhere and everything. But still, they're attached to his personal presence. Naturally, the personal presence means more than just simply only meditating on the Lord and feeling the presence of the Lord in his unmanifested form. Mm. The avyakta, the unmanifested, the avyakta murtina, Maya, maya, maya itam idam sarvam jagat avyakta murtina. Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, by me in my unmanifested form, this entire universe is pervaded. All beings are in me, but I am not in them. Lord Krishna is describing how his avyakta also has a form. It's, of course, unmanifested. But the, the Pandavas and Queen Kunti, they don't want the avyakta, they want the, the yakta, they want the manifested form. Why have the unmanifested? We want to have the Lord there in His manifest form. And then it's more relishable, more appreciable. And so Queen Kunti is praying like this, she's asking Lord Krishna to stay longer, to not to leave them. So of course this is the longing of the devotees, and the devotee naturally wants to feel the presence of the Lord, and that we're always anxious for the Lord. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would be saying, 
Where are you now, Krishna? When will you come? So the devotee wants to come. We're following Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We want to, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself, he follows in the mood of the gopis, which is vipra lamba seva, feeling the separation from the Lord. And Queen Kunti is showing that same separation from the Lord. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes in the sixth chapter, Yomam Pashati Sarvatra Sarvam Chamai Pashati Tashyaham Na Pranashami Sata Mena Pranashati For one who sees me everywhere, and sees everything in me, I am never lost to him, nor is he ever lost to me. So this verse describes the Uttama Adhikari. The Uttama Adhikari sees the Lord everywhere, in everything. The, of course, that's a very advanced devotee, but this is the vision of the pure devotees. They're seeing the Lord everywhere, in everything. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita, it also describes how the, the, devote, the pure devotee, the topmost devotee, they, they don't just see the external feature of the living entities, moving and non-moving. But they see Krishna, or they see their worshipful deity in everyone and in everything. They're able to see that. They don't just see the external form of the living entities. They see the Lord in, ev in everything, everywhere, in everyone. So that vision is there of the Uttama Adhikari. They're seeing the deity everywhere. Mm -hmm. Queen Kunti wants to be able to see Lord Krishna personally. She wants him to remain there with her. Naturally, she doesn't want him to go. Just like when the devotees come when Prabhupada would come, or when His Holiness Srila Jagpataka Swami Maharaj would come, then naturally we want them to stay. We want them to stay longer with us. We don't want them ever to leave. But it's the nature of the Lord that He likes to go, to go to other devotees. He has to go and be with other devotees. And in this way, by separating himself from the devotees, then he increases their longing for him. That mood of separation. There is some boga, the pleasure of meeting, and there is vipralamba, the pleasure of separation. So some boga, the pleasure of meeting, just like some, you don't see somebody after a long time and then you feel pleasure in meeting them. Right? But then when we're with them after a while, we, we don't take, you know, it, it doesn't have so much meaning anymore because we think, well, it's always there, they're always there, she's always there, you know. And we say, uh, Familiarity breeds contempt. You know, the more familiar we are with someone, then the less we appreciate them. So Lord Krishna arranges vipralamba, separation, to increase the hankering of the devotees. With that separation, of course, after some time, then again there will be some boga. There will again be union and meeting with the Lord. 
So the Lord arranges his pastimes in this way. For some time he'll be with a devotee and then he'll leave. Just like Srila Narada Muni. Narada Muni in his previous life, he was the son of the maidservant woman and he had association with the Bhaktivedantas and they taught him how to fix the mind on the Lord. So it happened that after Narada Muni's mother died, then the boy was left to wander the world. And he wandered all across the world and experienced life in so many different conditions. And at a certain point, then he sat down and meditated on the Supreme Lord. And the Lord appeared to him and the Lord spoke to him. But then the Lord also told him that I regret you will not be able to see me anymore in this lifetime. So in this way, Narada Muni's uh, eagerness to be with the Lord was increased immensely because he had met the Lord and then the Lord had disappeared and left him. So he was always hankering, when will the Lord again come? Just like Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took initiation in Gaya, and after his initiation in Gaya, he was on his way back to his home in Mayapur and he came to Kanai Natsala. So Kanai Natsala is the, the most mystical place. It is said Lord Krishna comes there. When he leaves the Rasa dance, he will come to Kanai Natsala. When he disappears from the gopis, at that time, Lord Krishna goes to Kanai Natsala. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was in Kanai Natsala and it happened that Lord Krishna appeared to him. You may say, well Lord Krishna, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna. How could Krishna appear to him? But remember, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was cultivating the mood of the gopis. He was in the mood particularly of Srimati Radharani. And he was feeling the presence of Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna appeared to him. But then Lord Krishna disappeared. And when Lord Krishna disappeared, then Mahaprabhu became almost like a madman and he was just feeling so much separation from Lord Krishna and he was everywhere. When will you come? Where are you Krishna? Where are you? And in this way he came back to Mayapur and, and then he began the nocturnal kirtan with all the devotees. Previously, Mahaprabhu had been performing his scholarly pastimes. But after his initiation and after his transcendental experience at Kanai Natsala, then he felt that longing to be with Krishna, that mood of Vipralamba was awakened in him. So all the followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they also cultivate that mood, that longing, hankering to be with Krishna, longing for the association of Lord Krishna. So Queen Kunti has that association. The Lord has been there with them in Hastinapur, but now Lord Krishna wants to depart. And Queen Kunti is feeling that pain that, oh no, please don't go, don't leave us. And she's describing why she doesn't want Lord Krishna to go. Because she's saying that our kingdom is so beautiful because it's smart with your lotus feet. 
the impressions of your lotus feet are everywhere. It was those same lotus footprints which were seen by Akrura. When Akrura came to Vrindavan, he had been sent by Kamsa to go to Vrindavan to bring Krishna and Balaram to Mathura for a wrestling match. And so Akrura was given a new chariot and he came to Vrindavan. And before he even met Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram, he saw the footprints in the dust of Vrindavan. And when he saw those footprints marked with those same different auspicious symbols, then Akrura fell on the ground and he rolled in that dust and covered his body in the dust of the dam. And Srila Prabhupada remarks, he said, this should be the mood in entering the holy dam. When you enter the holy dam, we should do like that. We should fall in the dust and take that dust all over the body. Because that dust is mixed with the atoms from the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. So it's very sacred dust. And indeed, the devotees of the Lord are accustomed to even eat that dust. We will take that dust of the dam, that padarinu, right? The dust of the dam. We will like to even relish some morsels of dust from the holy dam because we know that the dust of the dam is mixed with atoms from the lotus feet of Lord Krishna and it is chintamani. It is not ordinary dust. It is all chintamani. The trees are kalpa priksha and the cows are all kamadenu and the dust is chintamani. It is so special. We cannot always appreciate these things because of our mundane vision, because of our limited consciousness. We're not so much able to relish the transcendental nature of these things. But for the people of Vrindavan, they can appreciate and they relish and they take full advantage of the holy dawn. So Queen Kunti is teaching all of us how to remember Krishna. In the course of her prayers, she is guiding the Pandavas and all of us in how we can remember Lord Krishna more in every situation. Even in calamities, even in calamities, we should be able to fix our mind on Krishna. Actually, we could say it's easier to fix the mind on Krishna when there are calamities. When we're comfortable and when we're relishing opulences, then it's easy to forget Krishna. But we should remember Krishna in every situation, in happiness and in distress. A devotee will relish, his, he will fix his mind on the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. Why the lotus feet? Because that is the beginning of our meditation on the form of Krishna. We always come and see the deities from the lotus feet and then we look up. Because the Lord is our superior, we are subordinate to him. So we begin with coming before a superior, we should be humble, we bow down and when we look up, we look first at the lotus feet and then gradually we come up to see the lotus face and the, all the different auspicious 
features of the form of the Lord. So Queen Kunti is teaching us how to remember Krishna. She has told us wonderful things like Krishnaya Vasudevaya Devaki Nandanaya Cha Nanda Gopa Komaraya Govindaya Namo Namaha that Lord Krishna is the son of Vasudeva and Devaki and he is the first child of Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda and he's lived in Vrindavan and all the people of Vrindavan love him very much. Namo Pankaja Nabaya, Namo Pankaja Malane, Namo Pankaja Netraya, Namaste Pankaja That Lord Krishna's lotus feet are marked with the lotus flower. The lotus flower is a symbol of the goddess of fortune. It's an auspicious sign and it is one of the features on the Lord's lotus feet. Uh, the Lord's glance is as cool as the lotus flower. And the Lord is also, his neck is decorated with a garland of lotus flowers. And these different ways Queen Kunti is describing that when we see lotus flowers, we should think, Lord Krishna. Whenever we see the lotus flower, we will think of Lord Krishna. We will remember his lotus eyes, his lotus hands, his lotus feet, his lotus face, his lotus navel. His, his navel is marked with the depression of the lotus flower. In this way, remembering all these different features of Lord Krishna, we can fix our mind on Lord Krishna. So Queen Kunti is so kind to us, she is training all of us how to become Krishna conscious, how to remember Lord Krishna. We want to always remember Krishna, right? Smartavyam satatam vishnu vishmartavya najatu krit sarvi vidi nisidashor etayor eva kinkara. The primary regulative principle of all principles is to always remember Krishna or Vishnu and never forget him. So we are practicing, training this restless mind. Of course, it's not an easy thing. Arjuna also said controlling his mind was more difficult than controlling the wind. But Lord Krishna, he said, <coughs> it is undoubtedly difficult, Arjuna, but it is possible. It is possible by constant practice and detachment. These two things are required if we are going to conquer over the restless mind. Abhyasena tu kuntiya vairagena chakriyate. Abhyas, practice. We have to practice. Wherever the mind wanders to due to its restless and unsteady nature, bring it back. Don't allow it to dwell on the objects of the senses. Bring the mind back and focus on Krishna. And of detachment, vairagya, we have to let go of the material world. If we hold on to the material energy, then it will be very difficult. It would, just like if you have your foot in one boat and one foot in another boat, then it's going to be a difficult journey. We have to make up our mind, which way do we want to go? Do we want to go to Krishna or to Maya? We have that free will 
That is our independent choice to take shelter of Lord Krishna or to take the shelter of Maya. But we must remember that Maya is a cruel master and always gives us so many troubles. Lord Krishna, however, is very kind and he takes special care of his devotees. And we can see how caring Lord Krishna is. Okay. All right. So, huh? Questions? Huh? Okay. One question. Anybody has a question? No questions. Was that a question? class this morning, everybody came here, including me, very enthusiastic. When we were listening to the class, why you fall asleep, Maharaj? Why Maya is dragging us like that? <laughs> that because topics of Krishna are so peaceful and so pleasing to the mind that you can fall asleep so easily. You lay down, you try to sleep at night, you can't sleep. When you come to the Bhagavatam class and topics of Krishna are so pleasing and so satisfying to the mind that you can fall asleep. Okay? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Go on. I don't know. Where are we on? <laughs> Go on. What more questions? Are there any other questions? The, the, the Dasi Vrindava is so fine. How is it that it can be imprinted? It's almost unbelievable. It's so fine. Even you, the wind blows. The dust of the dam. Well, it's not all so fine. It depends where you are. There are different forests, you know, and there's different parts of the some parts of the for some forests. The soil is very rich and black, and other places it's sandy and green. It's not so soft everywhere. If you go to the place where the, the Tau fruits, what's that forest where Dendrukasura was? Talavan? Talavan, yeah, Talafruits. Tala the soil there is so black and rich, it's so nice soil. And it is very good to walk on, you know, after when we were walking, I remember we came in Talavan and it's going, oh, <laughs> so much relief, you know. Because somewhere else it's sharp stones and thorns and so on. But in Taliban it's beautiful, it's soft, mud, you know. So diff different regions. You can't say that the whole of the dam is just soft sand. But anyway, the, the impressions were there. And Akrura didn't just imagine it. He actually saw it. And Queen Kunti is seeing it also in Hastinapur. They, they, this was not, they were not, Kunti was in Hastinapur, that's different. It's different from Braja, different from the, the sand around Braja or like that. She was in Hastinapur, so it was different soil. The impressions of Lord Krishna's lotus feet were there and she was seeing them. 
And Akrura was also seeing them when he came there to the home of Nanda Maharaj and Yashoda. He saw there the cows were there and, and, and the, 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 the footprints were there and he fell off. So it's certainly possible. Queen Kunti, the family all went through so much. Queen uh, Kunti, the family went through so much of uh, test, and therefore they could appreciate uh, Krishna's uh, mercy. Uh, so, is it the same that somebody will only be able to appreciate the mercy of Krishna when he is put to test? <laughs> well, yes, certainly these tests are a great catalyst. They speed up our devotion and uh, increase our attachment to Lord Krishna. Bhaktivinoda Thakur said that, uh, talks about the, the difficulties which we undergo are the greatest, the greatest uh, pleasure for a devotee. The difficulties which we undergo help to increase our attachment. Uh, do we need to? But but not uh, not all devotees undergo all these difficulties. You know, some people they they can have a they can be. Like, we don't hear about Uddhava going through any great tests. Of course, he, he was tested when the Lord left the world, when the Lord is departing from the world and, and Uddhava has to stay. That was a test for Uddhava. We could say everyone is tested. That everyone is being tested. Some people may not see it as a test. For some people, it just mean. You know, they don't, they don't worry about it, they just go on and what seems like a test for some people is not a test for others. It's, it's the mind really, how our mind perceives these things. Do we see something as being very difficult, very challenging situation? For someone else it's very easy. And how our mind sees everything. But certainly Queen Kunti does say, she talks about calamities, let these calamities happen again and again. And so calam is it, what's a calamity? Oh, the, our house gets burned, somebody else may just laugh about it, you know, <laughs> they're not attached, oh, this got rid of that house, you know. It wasn't our house, you can see, but it wasn't our house anyway, so it doesn't matter. But anyway, certainly Queen Kunti felt the calamities were helping her. We see difficulties. We have to learn to see Krishna in every situation. But I heard the saying in India, they say that when, when, I'm, when I have money, I think of my goal. And when, I, when I'm in trouble, I'll pray to God. <laughs> it it sounds sound very typical, right? <laughs> situation, most people in that kind of situation. But actually, we should think of God at every moment. When we have money, we should think it's the grace of God. Prabhupada trains us, he said, when I'm happy, we should thank Krishna that I don't deserve this happiness. Krishna is just trying to encourage me. And when I'm suffering, we should think that actually I'm such a rascal, I, I should suffer much more. But Krishna has reduced my suffering. One of our devotees in Dubai, his wife lost her job, you know. So she was lamenting, you know, losing her job. We were trying to tell her, you know, you don't worry about it, you know, it could have been much worse, you know. And, and, then, and then later she found she, the, the company are going to pay her salary like a one year's salary, you know. 
and then four months salary also until she finds a new job. So she's going to get a lot of money. <laughs> you know. But still she was feeling, well, I, I like my job, you know. <laughs> so difficulties come. We have to be grateful. Whatever happens, it's Krishna's arrangement. The difficulties which come are God sent. And the happiness which comes is also God sent. We have to see Krishna in every situation. So that should be the vision of the devotee. Okay, Hare Krishna. So, any other qu comment, question? Okay, thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Srimad Bhagavatam ki, Srila Prabhupada ki, God Premanande. Thank you. 
Vishnupad Paramahansa Paribrajakacharya Ashtatara Sutta Sri Srimad His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedan Swami Srila Prabhupada Ki Iskon Founder Acharya Srila Prabhupada Ki Nitili La Pravishta Om Vishnupad Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur Srila Prabhupada Ki Ananta Koti Vaishnavindi Ki Nam Acharya Srila Haridas Thakur ki Prem Shri Gaur Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nichananda Shri Advaita Gadara Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhatta Vinda ki Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopinath Shyam Kun Radha Kun Kiri Govardhan ki Vrindavan Maya Purdam ki Ganga Maya Yamuna Maya ki Tausi Maharani Bhakti Devi ki Hari Nam Sankirtan ki Sri Jagannath Rathyatra Maha Mahotsava ki Oh glories assembled devotees Oh glories assembled devotees Oh glories assembled devotees Oh glories Sri Guru Sri Gauranga Oh glories Srila Prabhupada The lotus feet of our spiritual master are the only way by which we can attain pure devotional service. I bow down to his lotus feet with great awe and reverence. By his grace one can cross the ocean of material suffering and obtain the mercy of Krishna. 
My only wish is to have my consciousness purified by the words emanating from his lotus mouth. Attachment to his lotus feet is a perfection which fulfills all desires. He opens my darkened eyes and fills my heart with transcendental knowledge. He's my Lord, birth after birth. From him ecstatic prim emanates and by him ignorance is destroyed. The Vedic scriptures sing of his character. Our spiritual master is the ocean of mercy, friend of the poor, Lord and master of the devotees. O oh Master, please be merciful unto us. Give us the shade of your lotus feet. Your fame is spread all over the three worlds. We take shelter to your lotus feet. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Hey, Haribo, hey. welcome, welcome.